Greetings, Commanders. Your ship for now is your character. You can upgrade different modules. And with crafting that will come next year in Horizons, you will be able to customize your ship even more. At some point we will be able to walk around ship and stations. So we will have our characters and we will be able to tweak our looks, but for now ship is our character. So let's go to shipyard and buy a ship. If you are founders level backer or reach the lead rank in combat trading or exploration, you will be able to buy ships here at 10% discount. And easiest rank to reach in my opinion is trading elite because even smuggling missions count towards trading elite. If you want 15% discount go to Lee Young Ru controlled or exploited systems because there's still a bug. You are supposed to buy modules with 15% discount there but for some reason ships also you can buy with 15% discount. I think Vulture is a good choice because it has a lot of problems with power plant. So let me show you on Vulture example. First of all you can see name, manufacturer, price. Price will be different like I said I have 10% discount here. But even if you are not elite sometimes there are community goals where you can buy ships with up to 30% discount. This is description for ship and top speed, boost speed, maneuverability, frameshift drive range, laden, unladen. These stats are for stock variant. You will be able to increase greatly jump range, shields, armor. Cargo capacity also is for stock variant. Here you can see hard points for utility mounts and two large hard points. I will show you why utility mounts are very useful and the more utility mounts the better for your ship. Internals 2 class 1, 1 class 2, 1 class 4 and 1 class 5. The higher class means you can have higher class shields because you will use internal compartment for shields. Almost all ships can fit in highest class shields so if you want the best shields you will have vulture with class 5 shields. And below you can see other information which in my opinion is irrelevant because I would like to see the class of each module you can fit. So you could see an example which is maximum class of power plant. You can still find this information on web. It doesn't make any sense to me not to see that information right away. So just go and purchase ship and when you buying ship you can see that you can buy ship and sell your current ship. In my case I can't do that because I'm already in Vulture. But if you are in any other ship you can buy new ship and sell your current ship if you like to sell. But if you are selling your ship you will lose 10% of its value. So if you have expensive modules go to outfitting, sell your modules and then only you sell your ship. At some point modules also will have 10% penalty but for now you don't have any penalty on selling modules. So let me buy a new ship and store my current ship. Finally they fix this black screen when you are buying or switching ships. When you have bought your ship you want to go to outfitting straight away to upgrade your modules. There are many different modules. At first tab you have your weapons. They are called hard points. And here you can also manage utility mounts. Utility mounts are for different utility modules which can improve your ship stats or just help you greatly. I will go there and browse them all for you. I will sort them by name ascending. So first is cargo scanner. Most modules have ratings A, B, C, D, E, E being the worst, A being the best, but not always you need the best. In this case best means it's 4 km distance, but the power drive is 3.2. D in example 0.4 power drive so 3 times less but 2.5 kilometers all have same scan time. Cargo scanner is used to scan targeted ships for its cargo bay contents. You need to assign this module to fire group like a weapon, target a ship, be within in example for this particular model closer than 2.5 kilometers and keep your fire button pressed for 10 seconds while keeping target in your field of view. If targeted ship will leave your field of view, the scan will break. But if you keep your fire button pressed all the time and you manage to get target back to your field of view, the scan will continue. 
If you release fire button, you'll have to scan again from scratch 10 seconds. If you use Jaff launcher, it will break enemy ship's turret or gimbaled weapon lock on you. Not for long, I would say for 10 seconds or so, it depends on your speed. If you are very fast, it will not be as effective. So if you see enemies with gimbal or turret weapons, you release Jaff, it will break their lock on you. Also, for some reason, NPC ships releasing chaffs will break your scan. Not completely, but just stall it. Electronic counter, measure, missile and torpedo defense. Frame shift wake scanners are used to scan frame shift wakes. Frame shift drive wakes are left by ships who charge their frame shift drives. If you go to super cruise, you will leave low energy frame shift drive wake. If you fly to other system, hyper jump, you will leave high energy frame shift drive wake. And obviously, if you are leaving low energy frame shift drive wakes, nobody needs to scan them because it's clear that you left into super cruise and they can follow. But if you fly to different system for anyone to see which system that is, they need a frame shift drive wake scanner to scan this wake and then they can follow. And it also works in super cruise. If you see low energy wake, you know that ship exited super cruiser and you can target that wake. You don't need any scanners. And all you need is to be at 1000 km or less speed and at 1000 km or less distance from this wake to safely exit it. And then you should see the ship that left that wake right away. Heatsink launcher purges ship's heat into a disposable sink block. So if you are silent running or you use weapons like plasma railguns, too many weapons at the same time, that will overheat your ship very quickly. You can release heatsink and your ship will rapidly cool down. It takes several seconds for ship to cool down. And if you like to use railguns, you can work out something like shoot, shoot, heat sink, shoot, shoot, heat sink, or shoot, 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 heat sink, shoot, shoot, shoot. So you just have to try it out. Heat sink launcher, same as chaff launcher, has ammo. So if you run out of ammo, you can't use this module anymore. You need to go to station and rearm. Kill warrant scanner is similar to cargo scanner, almost same. Well, they are exactly same in terms of how they work. You assign them to fire group, target enemy, keep it in your field of view, fire the button, wait for 10 seconds, keep in your field of view enemy, and after 10 seconds you will see what bounty targeted ship has in other systems. To see if ship is wanted, you don't need any modules. You just target any ship, keep it in your field of view, wait for several seconds for basic scan to perform, and then you will see right away if ship is wanted. To see exact amount of bounty in this system, you need to go to contacts and then you can see more stats about selected target. If it's clean in current system or it's wanted. To see if it's wanted in other systems, you need kill warrant scanner. So if you are going to bounty hunt, you need this kill warrant scanner. And always before you kill targets, you need to scan them. Point defense, missile defense, it will shoot. Point defense turret is a small turret, it will shoot projectiles at incoming missiles. So if it sees missiles, it will automatically shoot, you don't need to do anything. All you have to do is make sure there's enough ammo. Shield booster I find the most useful from all. Because shield boosters directly boost your shields. The best rating A shield booster will boost your shield by 20%. So if you have 5 of those, your shields will be doubled. Vulture has 4 utility mounts, so you can have 4 best shield boosters if your power plant can handle that. So your shields will be by 80% better. So more utility mount ship has, the better you can outfit it in the end. If you are low on power, you should pick C rating because power draft is 0.7 and it adds 12%. Best shield boosters will require 1.2 power and will give you 20% increase. Now let's move to weapons. So there are three variants of most weapons. This icon means fixed, this is gimbaled and this is turret. Fixed means it will shoot only at fixed position, so you will have to keep enemy in center of your field of view. And fixed weapons will not track any enemy at all. You will have to do that manually by moving your ship. But some ships have huge gaps between hard points, so fixed weapons you can't use. You can use one fixed and one gimbaled. For example, clipper. The weapon placement is awful for fixed weapons. Gimbaled weapons will try to track targets between big brackets on your HUD. 
but only if they can, because if weapon is located below your ship in the middle, it will not track anything above ship's nose. And then there are turrets, which will automatically track enemies around you. Then there are two main weapon types. Thermic weapon, lasers, beam laser, burst laser, and kinetic weapon, cannons, multi-cannons, fragment cannons. So thermic weapons are best against shields, kinetic weapons are best against hull. So as you already probably figured out, it makes sense to have two kind of weapons on your ship if you have enough weapon slots. I usually go for beam lasers and cannons. Beam lasers to take down shields and cannons to take down hull. It makes sense to have gimbal cannons because they are easier to target enemy modules like power plant or frameshift drive, but it's up to you, it depends on ship really. Some ships, bigger ships, you probably want more gimbal weapons. On smaller crafts, you probably like fixed weapons. Difference between fixed and gimbal weapon of same class and rating would be 20%. So gimbal weapons are around 20% weaker, but they can track enemies for much longer. So probably in the end you will inflict greater damage. And I would say that turrets are only effective from close range up to 2 kilometers. So if you use turrets, fly close to enemies. For now, weapons have only one variant rating per class. So there are no A gimbal cannon for class 2, only D for now. Crafting may be changed that, we will see, but for now only one rating per type per class. And then there are some weapons, okay, there are missiles and torpedoes, they are explosive. There are heat seeker missiles, which will lock on target, you will have to wait for a couple seconds for them to lock, and then it will automatically track target. And there are dump fire missiles. These are seeker missiles, and these are dump fire missiles. Dump fire missiles will shoot straight, so if you fire them, they will fly straight, if they hit something, they will explode. If no, they will just fly straight, they are not tracking enemies. So they are used like any other fixed projectile weapon. And also, of course, missiles have limited ammo. And missiles are very weak against shields now. Missiles will be tweaked in 1.5 update. Weird. Plasma accelerator C2 is thermic and B3 is thermic and kinetic which it actually should be, because plasma accelerator and railguns both are thermic and kinetic weapons at the same time. And that means they are good against shields and good against hull at the same time, but they both require ammo, railguns only have 31 round, and plasma have 105 rounds. Plasma is very slow, projectile weapon, the higher the class actually, the lower the projectile speed, so class 3 plasma accelerator will be much slower than class 2. Same goes for cannons. Class 4 huge cannon will shoot very slow projectiles comparing to class 1 cannons. Railguns are different kind of weapons, they will shoot instantly, but they need to charge. So if you press fire, it will take around 1 second for them to charge. And only after this delay, railguns will fire. But when you actually fire the railguns, there is no delay, it will hit target right away. And railguns are probably the best weapons against modules, because they have best armor penetration from all weapons currently in the game. What you also should keep in mind is that weapons lose damage over the distance, especially if we are talking about thermic weapons like lasers. And from my experience, I would say that all weapons do same damage up to 1 km. After that, pulse burst beam lasers do less damage. I actually have a video about that as well. But in short, don't shoot lasers if you are further than 2 kilometers away from your target. So better spend this extra time to recharge your weapon capacitor. And some weapons have no or very little penalty regarding distance. Those weapons are railguns, cannons. With railguns it's easy to snipe targets from far away, but with cannons you will probably miss unless they are flying in straight line. Also you should know that turrets are almost useless if target is further than 2 kilometers away. Not all weapons have three variants, gimbal, fixed and turrets. All lasers have, but there are only fixed variants for railguns, missiles, torpedoes, plasma accelerator, 
So explosive weapons and weapons which have properties of thermic and kinetic weapons at the same time only have fixed mounts. There are three types of ships, small, medium and large. Mostly you can say that by what landing pads they take. With only exception being Python, because by design it's a large ship, that only happens to be exactly the medium landing pad size, so it can land on medium pads. And if you use small weapons against medium or large ship's hull, it will have 33% damage penalty. Damage penalty is applied only against hull, not against shields, so against shields all weapons will do exactly 100% damage. So small weapons will have 100% damage only against small ships. Medium weapons against small and medium ships and large weapons will have 100% damage against all ship hulls. Vulture is good in that case because it has only large hardpoints, so you can have two large weapons that will not receive any damage against enemy ship's hull. But there are some weapons that are excluded from damage penalties, which are cannons and railguns. So medium railgun will not receive damage penalty against large ships. Different weapons generate different amount of heat. And that means that to shoot those weapons longer, you will have to keep 4 pips to weapon capacitor, because weapon capacitor will cool down your weapon. If you want to have less pips to weapons, but more pips to systems allowing you to have stronger shields or engines allowing you to move faster, you should use pulse lasers or kinetic weapons like cannons, multi-cannons, fragment cannons. But if you will pick beam laser, railgun, plasma accelerator, you will have to keep more pips to weapons. So it's up to you how you outfit your ship. The last thing you should know is that class 1 weapons all have mass of 2 tons, class 2 4 tons and class 3 8 tons. And that's important because heavier the ship you have, lower the jump range will be. At the bottom right you can see the changes when you just select any module, you will see right away how it will influence your ship's jump range. Now let's move to internal compartments and start with bulkheads. Bulkheads is armor. So all ships come with lightweight alloys, which is very basic armor that almost gives you no protection at all. You can upgrade it to reinforced, which is better, and military grade, which is even better. These are balanced armor types, which are good against kinetic and thermic weapons at the same time. Then there's mirrored surface composite, which is much, much better against thermic weapons. So if you are afraid that enemies will have lasers, you should use mirrored surface composite if you have enough money. Reactive surface composite is better against kinetic weapons. In short, military for its price is best all-rounder. Mirrored armor offers best protection against thermic and similar protection against kinetic as military. And reactive armor offers best protection against kinetic weapons and similar protection against thermic as military. In real life, I did a test. You can watch my video called Anaconda's Bulkhead Tests. And my test showed that mirrored armor is the best armor from all because it has almost as good protection against kinetic weapon as military, but much better protection against thermic weapons. While reactive armor was not much better than military armor. So if you have money, go for mirrored. If you don't have money, go for military. Bulkheads also influence your collisions. So if you are ramming enemies, you should have one of those three. They will help you a lot. But they also actually have weight. So as you see, 35 tons and 17 tons. So if you upgrade your ship bulkheads, the jump range will decrease. Power plant is the most important part for your ship because it is what generates power. I usually set class descending, so I see the best one on the top. This is the best power plant you can have on this ship. As you see, there are A, B, C, D and E rating modules. A being the best and E being the stock variant. D is the lightest of all modules, so if you want to make a trader or an explorer and you don't care about your ship's performance as much as you care about your jump range, you should definitely go for D rating modules. Maybe even class lower modules if you can fit them there. But for combat ships you always definitely need best one. And the price as you see also is different. The best one is three times, almost three times more expensive than the second. And B rating modules always are the heaviest ones. 
because by design it offers the best protection against enemy fire. As you see, A is 5 tons, B is 8 tons, C is 5, D is 4, and E is 10 tons. But this is exception for all other modules, life support, power distributor. E class is not as heavy as B, so B always is heaviest except power plant. E module always is worst. So if you are worried that somebody will destroy your power plant, you should go for B. I'm just not sure it's worth because you will lose jump range and you will lose some power. If you are a fighter, you need all power you can get. So remember, if you want the best, always go for A. If you want the lightest, always go for D. And the best protection offers B modules. I would never have anything but A and D on my ships anyway. The best power plant will, will give you 15.6 available power, 14.3, 13, 11, 10.4. So if you can always go for best one. Trusters is what you use to fly around in regular flight. So better the trusters, higher the top speed. And the best agility is achieved when your throttle is in blue sweet spot. Never forget about that. Again, default is E. And on most ships you will be able to have one or two class lower thrusters. If you want to use that ship for fighting, but more for hauling, you don't need the best thrusters, you can save energy and money. And remember, if you want to have the best jump range, always go for D modules. But on Vulture you just have to buy the best thrusters to be effective. Yeah, you see? E is 20 tons, D is 8 tons. C, 20, B again is 32 because it's the best protected module, but it's also the heaviest. And I would not advise you to use it because it's too heavy and it does not give you the best results in the end. But you can try and play with them if you like to see the difference. And you see power drove, optimal mass, maximum mass. So let's buy it. I need thrusters for fighter ships so I can turn around faster, boost faster. Frame ship drive is jump range. You can see right away the increase. I have now unladen 8 light years with D 9.6, 11.5, 14.2, 17 17.34. If you can afford, always go for best one. Unless you are not planning to jump around. Life support is how much oxygen you will have when your canopy will be breached. I usually go for D because it's lightest and it offers reasonable 7.5 minutes of oxygen. It's more than enough. If you make your ship the way that you can't have life support on when you are fighting, you probably will go for A, so 25 minutes you can fight. I mean, if you don't have enough power for your life support when your hard points are deployed, and you want to have shield cell banks at the same time, an example. You will replenish your oxygen when you dock at stations automatically. As you see, difference in power draw is not that great. But sometimes you will reach the point where you just need a little, little more to be able to have your preferred loadout. So let me buy it. Power distributor is the most important thing if you are fighting because it will give your weapons a bigger weapon capacitor. So you can cool your weapons faster and you can shoot for longer. So always if you are a fighter, go for best you can afford. Especially if you use weapons that generates a lot of heat. You can just select any power coupling and see the stats on the right. Weapons capacity, engines capacity, systems capacity. And if you click on this, you can compare them both. So same tons, weapon capacity increased by 14 engines by 10 systems also by 10 so weapons capacity for fighter ship is very important engine capacitor is useful if you are planning on boosting often so bigger the capacitor more often you can boost sensors only are used to resolve targets on your sensors or radar call it as you like and the only difference between best and worst sensors is how far away they will resolve target for you. As you see, 6.72 kilometers and 4.48 kilometers. It all comes down to how much power you can spare. 
If you have enough, go for best sensors. If you don't have enough, go for D or even E. And you are not going to shoot anything further than 2, 2.5 kilometers from you anyway. So I will go always again for D because it's lightest, it will increase my jump range. And when my friend was playing with silent run ship, I tested best and worst sensors and the difference really is not impressive. I could resolve silent run ship with best sensors, A rating sensors, from around 550 meters. With worst sensors, E rating sensors, I could resolve target from like 650 meters. So I don't think we really should get A rating sensors. Maybe that will change in future. And devs told us multiple times that sensors do not help tracking enemies for gimbal or turret weapons. Sensors only resolve targets on your radar. Fuel tank is used for your fuel storage. Obviously, if you have bigger tank, you can do more jumps without refueling. Same time, if you want to increase your jump range at cost of total jump distance you can make, you can buy smaller fuel tank because fuel also has weight. And by reducing your ship's total weight, you increase its jump range. But there's another way you can actually buy into any internal compartment, you can buy fuel tank and increase your fuel tank capacity. And now we reach internal compartments. This particular ship has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 internal compartments. One internal compartment you should reserve for shields. Usually it's the biggest compartment if you need strongest shields. You can fly without shields, so have bigger cargo hold. And usually you would use highest class compartment, internal compartment for shield generator. There's only one ship, Orca which do not allow you to use highest compartment for shields, all other ships allow you to do that. And like before you can always check which class is max, which class you have and what rating there is. As you see I always have A or D, it makes sense to me. And Vulture is a fighter, so you would probably go for best shields you can have. Unless you are planning to use Silent Run a lot, I would go for best shields for all fighting ships you have. The better the shield, more power it will require. And don't forget about shield boosters, they will add to shield strength as well. And there are many different modules you can have in internal compartments, let me name ascending and browse them. Advanced discovery scanner is used for discovery, so if you are explorer, this is your best scanner. Autofill maintenance unit is used to repair your modules. It can be done from right user interface module screen if you have any unit, autofill maintenance unit. You just click on any module and if it's damaged it will be repaired. It works automatically but keep in mind that during repair your module will go offline. So do not try to repair your frameshift drive while you are in Supercruise. So as you see different classes and different ratings, class 4 rating D, class 3 rating E. You can see repair capacity, ammo maximum, power draw, like all modules. So you can't use this indefinitely. When you run out of ammo, you will have to restock this at stations. This module might come in handy if you are exploring it far away from civilization. So after autofill maintenance, you can have cargo racks. And it's actually easy. Class 1, 2 tons. Class 2, 4 tons. Class 3, 8 tons. Class 4, 16. So class 5 32, class 6 64, class 7 128 tons. That's where you can calculate easily the maximum cargo capacity of each ship if you know which class internal compartments it has. Collector limpet is used to collect canisters and asteroid chunks if you are a miner or you want to transfer a lot of cargo from one ship to another. There's a limit how many cargo canisters you can eject at the same time. I think it's 100. But I did not try it. If you eject more, they will be all destroyed. Frameshift drive interdictor is used to interdict ships in supercruise. You just assign this to your fire groups. Get behind target, you need to be behind, you can't interdict from anywhere. And if you are in range of your frameshift drive interdictor, You'll start the interdiction sequence, so you can bring out any ship out of supercruise. And same way other ships can bring your ship out of supercruise as well. 
They are different classes, different ratings, different power draws. Fuel scoop is very important for most ships. Because if you are flying large distances, you will not be able to do that in one attempt unless you have fuel scoop. Not all stars are scoopable. You can find in wiki page which are, I think it was B, N, G, K, M. Those stars are scoopable. And if you know this or have it written down, you can always plan your route and you will never run out of fuel if you have fuel scoop. Higher the class, faster it will scoop fuel. For trading ships, if you are flying only 1, 2, 3 jumps, it's not useful, but for explorers or even on combat ships, if you need to cover long distance, like 3, 4, 500 light years, it will be faster to buy fuel scoop, fly there and then sell your fuel scoop and swap it to shield cell bank or any other module you need. And there are additional fuel tanks. Again, it's same capacity as cargo racks. Class 1, 2, class 2, 4, class 3, 8 and class 4, 16. Sometimes it's useful to have bigger fuel tanks. You can fly longer distance without refueling if you don't have fuel scoop. If you are explorer, probably also it's useful. Just keep in mind, if you replace all internal compartments with additional fuel tanks, it's same as flying fully loaded with cargo. So your jump range will be greatly reduced. Fuel transfer limpets will transfer fuel between you and targeted ship. It's same, it works same as collector drones, but you need to buy these drones at stations, ammunition. One drone will take one ton of your cargo space. So they are disposable and you will have to buy them before you can use each time. Cargo hatch limpet is used to break open targeted ship's cargo bay so you can scoop canisters. But before you can break cargo hatch open you need to get rid of enemy shields. By the way point defense turrets can shoot down limpets. So if you want to pirate make sure you have enough limpets before you go. Also limpets can be shut down manually. Hull reinforcement packages will increase your hull's resistance. They work similar to shield boosters, just instead of increasing your shield strength, they will increase your ship's armor. You can see that at shipyard when you upgrade your ship. At shipyards you can see exact armor and shield values for your stored ships. So if you often lose shields or you are flying silent run, you probably want to have many hull reinforcements. Prospector limpet is used in mining. If you want to know what asteroid is made from, you launch a limpet, it will scan it and return results to you. So it's very useful. But if you are a miner, you definitely need refinery module. You can manage it at right user interface under cargo tab. And also you need mining laser obviously. You need to fire them at asteroid, wait for fragments to come off. Then you launch your collector drones, they will collect these fragments, bring back to your ship and they will be stored to refinery where you can manage those fragments. And shield cell banks is the most useful module for a fighter. These will recharge your shields fast, but there are limited uses. And when you run out of shield cell bank ammo, you have to dock and rearm your shield cell banks. And higher the class, bigger the charge it has. And in most cases you probably will want to use multiple shield cell banks at the same time. So you can recharge your shields from one ring to full shields. And they have different charges and amount of charges. For example, shield cell bank best one, rating A, class 4, that I can have here, will have overall charge slightly less than rating B. I mean if I fire all four shield cell banks of rating A, I will have less than if I would fire all five shield cell banks from rating B of same class. So you have a choice, more charge per shield cell bank or more charge per all shield cell banks. But keep in mind that you can't use shield cell banks when your shields are offline. You need to have shields, at least 1% of your shields online, then you can recharge them. And there is 5 second delay between you pressing the fire button to launch shield cell bank and actually shields to start charging, so do not press fire button too late. Shield cell banks are most useful for combat ships, trading ships not so much. In trading ships you should avoid fighting by all means. And you can combine them together, there's a key you can bind for shield cell banks, you don't need to make them a separate fire group. 
and they will fire all of them which are active so you can stack them together which is very useful if you have strong shields so you can recharge them with one key press but be careful because there are 5 second delay before shields will start recharge and if during these 5 seconds you lose shields completely shield cell banks won't help you at all so in the end it's all about correct timing if you are too late you lose your shields and shield cell banks also generate heat so if you are shooting boosting and charging your shields there's a big chance that you will overheat your ship as you see i can't have two shield generators only one and docking computer if you want to listen to funny music and don't want to dock it will take much longer time to dock but you can buy a docking computer and it will dock your ship i've actually never used docking computers so i don't know how it works on the right you see also very important stats my cargo capacity fuel capacity mass jump range unladen laden retracted deployed available i did not buy any weapons so i still have more than i need but let me actually buy best shield cell banks so i can show you how to set priorities if you are above your power limit so don't worry you can exceed it but you will have to set priorities right because there are different flight modes and you don't need some modules when you are in regular flight and some modules when you are in super cruise now i exceeded it but it's not a problem and what do i need here i would buy usually in class one frame sheet drive interdict an example so if you know that you'll be interdicting ships in super cruise you should go for frame sheet drive interdictor and well i can buy fuel scoop but it doesn't make sense class one fuel scoop is very 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 slow at scooping fuel you can see scoop rate when you select fuel scoop module the best one will scoop the 0 0.04 tons second and the worst one 0 0.02 it will take a lot of time i would start using only from class three fuel scoops maybe two in some cases but on bigger ships even four five on asp three is okay but if you want very fast you need class four or five even and remember you can always sell your module for exactly same price that you have paid for it you don't lose 10 percent so you can just buy fuel scoop fly to destination dock to station preferably high-tech station because there you can find more different modules and just swap back to shield cell bank or whatever you had there let's go to weapons let me buy class 3 pulse laser fixed one as you see already i'm exceeding my power output but it's not a problem in the end you can play with your priorities and set them right and gimbal cannon so pulse laser will be used only for shields and cannon for hull because of vultures power issues you should go for least power hungry weapons so forget about railguns beam lasers unless you are willing to sacrifice some of your internal modules like thrusters or shields and here i would go for kill warrant scanner but not the best one because of the power issues i will go for 0 0.4 yeah it's doubling always so i will go for the rated one and into rest utility mounts i will buy shield boosters which probably is not the best idea because of power issues and if you have shortage of power you should go with c rating shield boosters if you have enough power always go for a because a will give you 20 percent increase for shields c will give only 12 percent increase and i need better shields so i will go for them shield boost i probably will not be able to have them all turned on but let's see the highest number of utility amounts has anaconda eight so you can calculate that by having eight best shield boosters you can increase anaconda shields by 160 percent it's insane that's why utility amounts now are very important for all ships especially fighting ships and now you see 
I have no fire groups and what's even worse, all my modules are turned off because I have 126%. So what you do now is just set your module priorities correctly. Not to have any trouble, I would advise you to set shield cell banks to 2. Frame sheet drives to... I can't send to 4. I need something else to set to 4. To 4. Interdictor also, you will be... There are modules you'll be using in combat. Like weapons. Shield booster, shield cell banks, thrusters, shields. And there are modules that you will be using only in supercruise like fuel, scoop, frameshift drive, scanner, frameshift drive interdictor, frameshift drive. Where's cargo hatch? You don't need cargo hatch. Okay, cargo hatch is also turned off. And you can actually check out there's Coriolis.io webpage. You can set and check different variants for your ship, so you don't need to buy a ship to check out if you can support what you want. You just go to that web page, play with different ship loadouts and you will see exactly how much your ship can handle. But if you don't like third party tools, you can just buy a ship and play with priorities by yourself. Turn modules manually on and off and see which ones work for you. I will turn off all modules now that I won't need in a fight like frameshift drive, cargo hatch and other modules. You can even disable and enable modules in the middle of fight. Mostly that's done with shield cell banks. I can use my ship with hard points deployed if I don't have shield cell banks on and frameshift drive interdictor and frameshift drive, which is actually pretty normal because you don't need those modules anyway. If I will want to use my shield cell banks, I will have to retract my hard points. I will show you how that works. So it will take some extra seconds, maybe like 4-5 extra seconds. And you will have to time your shield cell banks even more carefully. So when you leave fire zone, you can try your weapons out to see. Let me deploy hard points, as you see. Is hard points retracted? I can use one shield cell bank. I have shield boosters, and but I can't use frameshift drive interdictor, frameshift drive. For that to use, I will have to disable my shield cell banks. Power plant capacity exceeded. Power limit exceeded. Let me deploy hard points. So I can use my shield cell bank only when my hard points are retracted. It takes quite some time actually. I am retracting hard points. It's like 4-5 seconds. Then I can use my shield cell bank. Just don't deploy your hard points before your shields are fully charged. So now you can retract, because if you put the module offline, the shields will stop recharging. And with this extra 5 second delay, while you are waiting for hard points to deploy, you will have to time your shield cell bank much more careful. And if you want to use your hyper jump now, you will have to disable manually shield cell bank as well. Power for vulture is just not enough. But you don't need frame should drive interdictor, frame should drive cargo hatch when you are fighting. You don't need them. And you can play with priorities. So priority one is highest. Modules with priority one will be shut down the last. And modules with priority five will be turned off first. You see, I don't have enough power for 3, 4 and 5 now. So think, there are many ways to set your priorities in different ways which you prefer most. You can scan enemy with kill warrant scanners and just disable it. You can start the fight only with thermic weapons, because kinetic weapons you'll be using only when enemy loses shields, so you can turn them off, then you turn on. You can even have shield boosters on when your hard points are retracted and when you deploy shield boosters go offline. There are many different ways you can set your priorities. Let me show you now how you can check where your hard points are actually physically located on your ship. You need to use debug cameras, there's a key under options controls. Let me try to find it quickly for you. It was under miscellaneous if I remember correctly. Classified toggle, camera toggle. So you can set any key here and then 
let me go back to you can use it classified camera mode and you can move camera around with same controllers that you are moving your ship as you can see hard points on this particular ship is located very close to its nose so they will track anything from here up to probably here so anything in front of you and above center of your field of view will be tracked by gimbaled weapons if you have any vulture has very good weapon placements for fixed gimbaled or turrets this is how you check for ships hard point locations use classified camera why did they name it that way i don't know so now you should know all or almost all about priorities outfitting buying ships and upgrading oh it is long video i know sorry guys fly safe commanders